The director of the Federal Air Marshal Service is responding to a scathing New York Times report that claims the organization has issues with alcohol abuse, harassment, and low morale in its ranks. The service was created in 1961 and expanded after the September 11th attacks. It has about 3,000 officers and an annual budget of $800 million. Critics say it needs to be reformed or possibly shut down. Chris Van Cleve was given special access to the Air Marshal Training Center outside Atlantic City, New Jersey. He's at the service's field office in Chantilly, Virginia. Chris, good morning. Good morning. Air Marshals use mock cabins like this one to train for worst case scenarios. Their mission is to keep an airliner from being used as a weapon, and that requires some pretty specialized training. But the agency has been faulted for not being able to effectively show how good of a deterrent it is to terrorism. And this latest controversy has some lawmakers asking if it's a layer of security worth paying for. Get back! Get back! It's a scenario that should not happen. Hijackers with a bomb on a U.S. airliner. But it's the type of situation federal air marshals have been training for around the clock in simulations like this since 9-11. In my mind, success is the security of the traveling public um, and the fact that we haven't had any major incidents on U.S. air carriers um, since 9-11. Rod Allison is the director of the Federal Air Marshal Service, a force of approximately 3,000, about half are military veterans, working undercover as passengers, charged with securing the nation's 42,000 daily domestic and international flights. They're not on every flight, and we're not on board for the failed shoe bomber or unsuccessful underwear bomber. How many terror plots in flight have air marshals disrupted? Well, I can't point to one that says uh, this particular plot was disrupted. Shouldn't you be able to, though? Now, we have seen uh, a number of plots, obviously, over the years, um, of which the Air Marshal Service has provided added security. Remain calm! We are the police! Next month, the Government Accountability Office will begin a review of the working environment at the agency, dogged by complaints of low morale, harassment, and alcohol abuse. How big of an issue do you feel alcohol abuse is currently um, within your ranks. Do I see where people get in trouble like any other large organization um, with, with alcohol? Absolutely. But do I see it as or do I think it's abuse? No, I do not. Last year, an inspector general report found limitations with contributions to aviation security and recommended shutting down some operations to better use resources. It's just money going down a rat hole and doing no good whatsoever. Congressman John Duncan, a Tennessee Republican, wants to end the program. If it was up to me, we wouldn't still have it because I think it's the most needless, useless, wasteful uh, uh, organization in the entire federal government, and that's saying a lot. What is not in question is the agency's focus on training. We were invited inside the Federal Air Marshal Training Center in Atlantic City. The training is intense and not only highlights marksmanship, but also quick decision making. Firearms instructor Gary Decker. At 37,000 feet, we can't call for backup, number one, and we're in such a confined space, we can't make mistakes. Michael LaFrance joined the Air Marshals after 9-11 and now helps run the training center. I mean, you've reinforced the cockpit doors, you vet people better uh, before they get on the planes, you've armed pilots. You're an Air Marshal. Why do you need to be on a plane? The armored cockpit doors, the other layers of security, there is fail points there, and the air marshals are there as the last line of defense and take control if there is a hostile act against an aircraft. The TSA administrator tells CBS this morning he does not see any systemic problems with the air marshal service and says he believes those days are in the TSA's past. Air marshals have never had to engage a terrorist or a hijacker, and the agency only makes a handful of arrests a year, but says arrests aren't the main goal and that air marshals are called upon every couple of weeks to deal with disruptive passengers. Gail? All right, Chris Van Cleve, it's a very interesting question. It'll be interesting to see if they figure it out. I personally like having, knowing that there's an air marshal on the flight. You know, okay. it, 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 the people say, what good are they? They're plenty good when, they're, when they get called into action. Well, it's also hard to determine the deterrent effect. Yes. If you think that one of the passengers might yes. be an air marshal, yes. you know, perhaps it makes you pause. If you're up to no good, that is. Any thoughts, Nora O'Donnell? No? I like air marshals. <laughs> okay. All Especially right. with this, all these disruptive passengers. Yes, I, 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 nice listen, I think as long as there are threats, it's a good thing. Mm -hmm. We'll see what happens. Thank you again, Chris Van Cleve.